Okay, folks. Uh, so if you would kind of stop where you're at and give me your attention, I would appreciate it. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate is going to help you with your lab. It's going to demonstrate. It's going to help you with your hands-on test. And I remember the first time uh, I came across this kind of exercise, and I thought it was a great exercise because it just is something that you do all the time in the real world. I mean, in the real world. And no matter, you could pick your application, pick your software, and they're going to give you a search box. And they're going to let you search for something, right? Be it Facebook, be it Spotify, be it Amazon, be it Google. Pick your software. It doesn't matter. The, the ability to search for information is, is in that software. And so this is kind of like the entry level, like how do we get to a point where we can search for information in a search box. And, and I, wanna, I wanna demonstrate how to do that. So I think this is a very applicable bit of code to, to software development and to uh, learning to search for something in a piece of software. And again, this is the entry level search. Um, so I'll, I'll spin up a Windows Form app, and I'll just call this uh, Search for Artist. And so since we're, you know, said Spotify, let's go ahead and create a little search box. It's going to allow us to search for an artist as if this was Spotify. And so we load the designer, and let's bring in our toolbox and a little label and go to the properties of this label now i'm still seeing some some uh naming convention mistakes um because as you're adding controls to this form you're gonna notice some labels like this label one it's not really important to name label one. Why? Well, what is it going to say? It's going to say search for an artist. And that label is static. It's never going to change. And I'm, no <coughs> I'm never going to programmatically change the text of that label in my code. So for that reason, because I'm never going to access this label in my source code, it's not really important for me to change the name of this label. But the rule of thumb is if you ever are going to look at, if you're ever going to look at a control in code, we should give it a good name. And so an example of that is this text box. I'm going to add this text box, which will be the search text box to the form. And right away, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label it. I'm going to label it because I know that that text box will be something that I'm looking at in the C-sharp code. And so I'm going to call this something like TXT search. Now, the convention behind control names is camel casing, meaning it starts with lowercase first word. And the first word is an abbreviation of the type of control that it is. Very simply, TXT for text box, RDO for radio button, CHK for checkbox, BTN for button, LST for list. Okay, you get the idea is that you want to you want to identify the type of control that it is followed by a good name. This is a searching text box, so I think TXT search is a pretty decent name. And I will absolutely access this control in the code, so I, I do want to name it. <clears throat> so some controls you want to name if you access them in the code. If you don't access them in the code, not so important to, to name. Same thing with my button. Um, I'm going to access this button in the code. So of course I'm going to name it BTN search. And I want the tech box to say search. It's a little search button, okay? And and there we go. So here's our here's our here's our form and all I want to do is maybe 
um, you know, say whether this artist exists in Spotify or not. So artist found or artist not found. That's all I'm doing here. Artist found, artist not found. Now that I've named my button, I'm going to double click. Notice what happens when I name it first and then I generate the event handler. It gives me a nice method name. My method is named button search underscore click. Right? That's a nice that's a nice method name for my event handler. So I need to declare what are the artists that are in my version of Spotify, right? So I'm gonna have an array, a string array of artists equal to new string array. And I'm gonna initialize it with some artists. And there's my first artist, there's my second one, there's my third one. Give me some of your favorite music, musical artists, rappers, pop singers, country. Give me three. Who? MF Jam. MF Jam is what I heard. Jim. One word? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. All righty. Weird Al. Weird Al is the second one. Paramore. Paramore is the third one. I get that right? All right. We've got three artists in our Spotify. And we're going to let the user search for that artist. So now I need to basically read the string from the user. So I'll have string user artist. I don't know, the user artist that they're searching for. Right? This is the string that the that the user is providing txt search.txt. Just pointing this out, if you're storing a string on the left, the text property of a text box is a string on the right. So you got a string on the left, a string on the right. You do not need to convert here. I see, I see people thinking they always need to convert. If you've got a string on the left, you don't need to convert because what a text property is by default is a string. So now we have our artists in a string array and I have a value that the user is searching for stored in this string. Now what I want to do is I'm going to loop over my artist array. Again, it's it's an array called artist. So I'm going to type in a four. I'm going to use the code snippet for my four. And my code snippet for my four has a length, but length what the length of what? What do we want to loop over? We want to loop over our array in this case. So we want to loop over artists dot length artist dot and notice it's a capital L on length so how many iterations of this loop will will occur how many iterations three is correct right yes so why is it uh, automatically put in like lower the cell is that just like supposed to be a placeholder or? yeah I think it's just a um, it's like hey I don't know what you want to loop over probably the length of something okay. yeah um, yep. That's all. That's okay. So there's a couple of methods that I want to introduce that belong to any string. So there's a couple of very useful methods that if there's a string, you can attach these methods to any string. Um, the first one is dot contains. And the second one is to lower. Contains is a method that will return true or false. And basically says, does this str string contain something else? True or false? Does this string contain something else? If I, if I were to put my name so if I were to say string username equals Evan Gudmestead, I could say if username dot contains Evan. Well, username does contain Evan. That is true. This if statement would be true. Okay. But what you have to realize about the contains is you have to say, okay, 
the string that I'm searching through, does it contain something else? And so the way that you can kind of take this logic, this contains logic, and apply it down here, well, I want to say, does MF Doom contain what the user is searching for? I can only assume MF stands for Monday through Friday, so we're going to go with that. Monday through Friday's Doom, is that what it is? Let's just go with that. See, I like that. Monday through Friday's Doom. It's only the weekend that counts. If you didn't know, now you know that's what it stands for. Okay, moving on. So how can I take this contains and apply it to what we're doing? Well, we don't, this is, this is not code that's relevant for what we need. We have an, an artist. This is gonna be on the inside of that contains. User artist is gonna be on the inside of this contains. And what's gonna be on the outside is gonna be MF Doom, Weird Al, and Paramore. So let's say if mfdoom dot contains what the user is searching for. So let's, the way that we code that, we have an array, artists. We say something like this. If artists sub i, that's our first artist, aka mfdoom, dot contains user artist. That's what the user is searching for. In other words, if this first artist contains what the user is searching for. Search, we say found artist. Yeah? Okay, so we, we're not necessarily handling the case of artist is never found. Okay, Tyler has a question? Metal phase or face? Oh, metal face. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you for, for the insight. So if we found the artist, let's just let's just kind of have an output. We need a label for our output. And I'll call this label, I like to call my output labels, I'm gonna delete the text. So I've got the text property, I'm gonna delete that. And the name, I'm gonna say label result, capital R. So LBL result, I like that for being my output label. And if my artist is found, I'll say LBL result dot text equals, I'll do my little string interpolation thing here um artist artist sub i was found whoops let me put that outside the was found so only if and again this is looping through all of our artists and seeing if the artist contains what the user is is searching for now i'm not um, oh, I need to boot up the right program, so let's boot that up. Okay, so here's the program, search for an artist. If I type in MF Doom, case sensitive, it says artist was found. If I say Weird Al, again, it's still case sensitive. It's gonna say Weird Al was found. Paramore, Paramore was found. So again, I think this, this seems very real world, okay? And we're getting there, certainly we're getting there. This gets way more complex, um, but this is introductory, right? Found or not. Notice if I were to search for Blink-182, it clearly is not giving me the feedback that I'm looking for. So we need to handle this case of, well, it's never found. There's different ways of handling that. One way that I like, because here's, here's the problem. It might intuitively say else. You might say, okay, else label result.txt is artist 
not found. Watch the problem that happens with this. Notice this loop is looping three times. Pretty much right now the way we have it coded, it's, it's looping three times. It can find MF Doom, but then the next time through the loop, it's gonna update our label to say not found, right? So even if I search, I just broke, it, by the way, MF Doom, it says not found. That should be found, right? So just putting this else block right here doesn't loop because that is looping three times. Now, as someone else in the class pointed out, if you put in the third one, Paramore, Paramore will still be found. Because the loop is over, it's not gonna update that label anymore, right? It's the last one. So this, this the way this code works, it only works for the last one. Clearly, this is broken. So this is not a good solution. Well, if you go to this point, right? Well, you could say, well, I could insert a break. In other words, as soon as you find an artist, update the label and then break out of the loop so that you're not searching anymore. You break out of the loop. And that is, that is one solution. Now, if I bring it back, MF Doom, MF Doom was found, Paramore, capital P, Paramore was found, Blink-182, not found. Now, this is, this is one solution depending on the, depending on who you listen to, um, these keyword breaks, first off, you're gonna find them in software. What, what does a break do? A break says terminate the loop early. So just by looking at this for loop, I can count. This for loop is a count controlled loop. It's gonna loop three times, okay? However, this keyword break, it'll terminate a loop early. Is if you hit break, the loop is done. No more looping of the break. Uh, 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 no more looping if you hit break. So some programmers will tell you, and I understand why, they say don't put breaks in your loops because they stop the conventional flow of how a loop should work. Conventionally, I should be able to look at this for loop and, it, and, and it's gonna loop three times. So there, the keyword break by some is not considered a good practice because it'll stop the conventional flow of a loop. So another way, instead of using a break, you could change this up. And I'll even take this else block out. So I'm gonna make a bool. Here's another way of solving it. So this is, this is a second way of solving the, the same thing. I'll say found artist equals false. I'm gonna assume that the artist is not found. If the artist is found, I'm just gonna change this to true. Found artist to true. So I've got this Boolean variable, started off at false, it's not found. Then here in my loop, if found artist, we set it to true. Now I can add an and to my loop here and found artist equals false. So, um, double equals, thank you. Aha. So now my loop is gonna continue while I is less than three and while found artist is false. So if the found artist is true, it will stop my loop. So it's not gonna continue to loop unnecessarily. This will stop my loop whenever that artist is found. And then outside of my for loop, I'm going to use this found artist. I'll say here, if found artist is still false, that's where I update my label. Label result dot text is artist not found. Two ways of kind of coding the same thing. I think some would consider this to be a better practice because it doesn't include a break keyword. Um, and as I demonstrate this, if I say blink 182, still it's gonna say artist not found. If I say paramore case sensitive, paramore is found. Notice lowercase paramore, it's, it's case sensitive still, right? So that's contains, but I did also say at the beginning of this of two lower. Um, and so right now you would call this a case 
sensitive search. It's a case sensitive search. If I type in a lowercase letter, it's gonna say not found. Other, otherwise, it's, it's working as intended. Um, the way to make this case insensitive is you have to you have to convert what the user is typing to all lowercase letters as well as converting what you're comparing it to to lowercase letters and so notice here i can get the text box if i want to lowercase what the user I can do it in a couple of different ways. I can lowercase user artist. So I can go here to user artist, user artist dot to lower. Now this is in a loop, so it's gonna to have to convert user artist a bunch of times. If there's a thousand times this is looping, it's gonna to have to convert user artist a thousand times. Okay, so I actually don't like that solution. Instead, whenever I pull it out of the text box, because that's a string right there, I could just to lower it once and now I just do that conversion one time instead of doing it a thousand times. So now I've lowercased whatever the user is giving me. Um, which is fine. So now user artist is lowercase. I also have to lowercase my data in stored in the array. So here, um, you know, it's, it's kind of it's kind of a little bit more readable to put it all in one place so even though I don't like this as much I'll just show you because it's, it's a little bit more readable um, if I say if artist sub I dot to lower dot contain so I take MF doom and make it all lowercase I take weird Al make it all lowercase I take paramore and make it all lowercase oh by the way if I search weird Al oops because Weird Al does contain the word Al. It is, if I just search for Al, that is working. So that's called a partial search. Contains will do partial search. You can do it without, if it's missing a letter, like at the start, like, right? Like say Weird sure. Al without the W, would it still work? That's right. That's right. So you gotta you gotta be aware of how contains work because it does do partial searches, and that's not always what. Sometimes, if you need an exact match, if you need an exact match, you're not using contains. Like you're searching through like someone's like an exact match of someone's social security number, you're not looking for contains because like someone's social does contain a three. That doesn't mean you found it. Um, I'm gonna lowercase the the weird owl and I'm gonna lowercase what the user is searching for so now I'm lowercasing two pieces of information Didn't you just say you're gonna do it on the... I did but I just want to show it in one place okay. so here if I search for owl weird owl was found if I search for paramore lowercase p notice it is finding paramore uh, if I search for weird owl Weird Al was found. MF Doom, all lowercase. MF Doom was found. But if I just say like the letter D, you know, D is contained by MF Doom. So it's going to find the first one that contains it. Like a, a well, Weird Al is the first one that contains an A. So again, contains will do partial searches, which is not always what you're looking for. If you're looking for an exact match, you're not looking for a contains. Okay, instead, instead of contains there, there's a couple ways of doing exact matches, but the equals method, and the equals method is an exact match. Okay, so we just, we just demonstrated search, partial searching, partial um, string searches, with case insensitive data. All right, now I know I went fast. I, I did record this, I'm gonna put it on YouTube and I'm just gonna take a snippet and throw it in the in the chat so you guys have that in the chat. Okay, so now you don't have to take a picture with your phone. Cool. I've been doing that. I know. <laughs>